Russia has about 20 arsenals of the same class as one in the Tver region. Ukrainian military expert Valery Ryabik said this. There are about 20 such arsenals on the territory of the Russian Federation. About seven of them are located within the potential range of the destruction means at a distance of 650 to 700 kilometers, which is typical, for example, for the Palyanitsia missile. It is possible that it could also have been used for this strike. After all, there is a video where you can hear a sound similar to a jet engine used in a rocket launcher. So, yes, there are up to seven units of this class of arsenals in this range, although most of them are smaller, he said on the Espresso TV channel. The warehouses are located along the supply lines of the troop groups, the military expert said. Some of them are located near the destroyed facility. Another number of facilities are stretched across Russia from north to south. One of these arsenals is located in the North Caucasus. It also falls under the potential impact of the agents that could be used given the damage in the Tver region, Ryabik said. Commenting on the strike on the warehouses in Toropets, he noted that Russia could hide some aspects of the construction of such warehouses due to the high level of corruption in the Russian Defense Ministry. However, the successful work of the Ukrainian armed forces should be taken into account. Many officials are already in jail for corruption crimes. On the other hand, we should not underestimate the skill of the armed forces which have found a way to destroy such warehouses. Destroying underground depots requires special tactical techniques and weapons with penetrating warheads that can reach protected ammunition caches, Ryabik added. Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center anticipates consequences of the lost ammunition on the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. The attack by Ukrainian drones on a missile depot in the Russian city of Toropets on September the 18th will lead to consequences on the front of Russia's war against Ukraine, which will be noticeable in the coming weeks. This was stated by the head of the Intelligence Center of the Estonian Defense Forces, Colonel Ants Giviselg. He noted that the Ukrainian defenders struck the warehouse at a time when some of the Russian ammunition had not yet been placed in the bunkers. Therefore, a chain of explosions occurred. Kivisel recalled that 30,000 tons of ammunition exploded, that is about 750,000 shells. According to him, Russia produces 10,000 shells a week, that is, it is a two to three month supply of ammunition. As a result of this attack, Russia suffered losses in ammunition, and we will see the consequences of this loss on the front in the coming weeks, he said. On September the 18th, drones of the Defense Forces of Ukraine successfully attacked the arsenal of the main missile and artillery department of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation in Toropka, Tver region. As noted, the warehouses stored missiles for operational tactical missile complexes, Tochka-U, anti-aircraft missiles and artillery ammunition. An Israeli airstrike in Beirut killed at least 14 people and wounded dozens more, Lebanese health officials said. It was the first such Israeli attack on Lebanon's capital in months and came shortly after Hezbollah pounded northern Israel with 140 rockets. Israel launched a rare airstrike that killed a senior Hezbollah military official in a densely populated southern Beirut neighborhood on Friday. It was the deadliest such strike on Lebanon's capital in decades, with Lebanese authorities reporting at least 14 people killed and dozens more wounded in the attack. The Israeli military's chief spokesman, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, said the strike on Beirut's southern Deia district killed Ibrahim Akil, a commander of Hezbollah's elite Radwan force, as well as 10 other Hezbollah operatives. The strike came after Hezbollah launched one of its most intense bombardments of northern Israel in nearly a year of fighting, largely targeting Israeli military sites. Hezbollah described its latest wave of rocket salvos as a response to past Israeli strikes on southern Lebanon, not as revenge for the mass explosions of Hezbollah pagers and walkie-talkies on Tuesday and Wednesday that killed at least 37 people, including two children, and wounded 2,900 others in attacks widely attributed to Israel. Israel and Hezbollah have traded fire regularly since Hamas' October 7 assault on southern Israel ignited the Israeli military's devastating offensive in Gaza. But previous cross-border attacks have largely struck areas in northern Israel that had been evacuated and less populated parts of southern Lebanon.